Today on Locked On Bulldogs, we're talking missing out on a couple recruits. Who might be next? And as always, Florida just still sucks. Next on Locked On Bulldogs. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Locked On Bulldogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Uh, I am back. We are talking more Georgia football, more dogs, and we are just absolutely within reach of the actual season kicking off. Fall camp is in full swing. Practice reports are going practice reports are going around. We have a couple injured players, which you might get to at the end of the episode and what that looks like. Uh, but just let you know, today's episode. Uh, is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book of Locked On Bulldogs. FanDuel.com slash Locked On for more information. We will be there back in a moment. But before we do that, uh, I want to talk about a couple of misses. Yes, you heard me correct. Misses for the Bulldogs. Now, many of us uh, are up in arms because we say to ourselves, okay, Hey, we didn't miss. Alabama gets a safety flip and and he's, he's taking our our crumbs. That's what that's what's happened. He's taking our crumbs. Saban is old and over the hill, and uh, he's he's just he's just getting the scraps. Okay, that's wrong. First of all, let's we'll talk about that here in a moment. Secondly, we lose out on another safety. Safety flips. We lose one. We got decommit. It goes over to Alabama. We lose on another. We're going to Florida State, and this is somewhat old news. But let's break down what this means for KJ Bolden. And for the recruiting class that we have coming in this year, that's still, by the way, number one. We are still number one. We are still top dog. Composite rankings and anything that has to do with recruiting, Georgia is still top dog. Now, a couple of players are coming after us, and we got a couple of guys that I'm going to talk about here uh, and what it looks like and, and where we stand and who we still might be able to get to make this class one of the most historic, but it is no longer on pace to shatter records. I think that is gone with the miss on two kids, four and five star safeties who are gone. I think this is, this is going to bode very badly for having the best recruiting class that's going to shatter records. We're going to have the best probably this year because I think there are a couple of names that will be coming into the fold, but I do not believe it gives us for the best chance ever to get the recruiting class that we all wanted to. Uh, so let's start here. Let's start why a recruit flipping from UGA going over to Alabama is not just scraps, but it's also not as bad as you're making it. And then we're going to get to the KJ Bolden news. And we're going to talk about what that means for Florida state, what that means for Georgia and the rest of college football landscape, by the way. And again, this is, this is the foolishness that is college football today. We'll, we're going to get to that in a moment, uh, but let's start with the flip. Look, flips are going to happen. Kirby flips people from other schools all the time and will continue to do so. Uh, we thought we had this class locked in. We had hit on every single thing that we wanted in this class. Every single thing that we wanted, we got. Um, I don't know how else to tell you that it's historic in the sense that Kirby's getting what he wants and he's getting at an earlier clip so he can focus on the season. That's point one. We got the quarterback we wanted. Check. We got running backs, deep running backs that we wanted. Uh, we got uh, a couple wide receivers transferred coming in and a couple of defensive tackles and a couple of uh, edge guys and a couple of offensive tackles and that are going to be basically used all over the offensive line. We got those and we got them very, 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 very early in the process. And it was fantastic. Loved every single moment of it. Here's why. This is not the miss that you think, but it's also not scraps because Kirby was flipping fools all day, all night, getting folk into the fold, getting them early, but also Alabama flipping one to them. It is true. Aguero is back there. Aguero is showing out in camp and he is going to play a lot this year. I'm on record as saying our current safety in the fold is going to be playing a lot this year. Fear not. But secondly, so that, that probably made a couple of people scared about that. But secondly, think about the type of player that Kirby wants at UGA and Kirby gets at UGA and the type of player that Bama is currently getting at Alabama. 
Point one, Kirby's getting dogs that want to work hard and want to just get after it. They know the tenacity needed. They know the work ethic needed. They know everything that is required of them to play at Georgia. And if you're telling me that you understood all that, you knew that, it wasn't like all of a sudden Alabama gained that because Alabama hasn't gained that. If you look at the players that went over there, the players that went over there did have not progressed. They have been incredible. They've been good. X's and O's even possibly have been good at Alabama. But the progression of players has not been. They're, they're all world quarterbacks have hit because they're all world quarterbacks. A couple of guys that should have been good that are out of the league already on the offensive line and on defense. You want to talk about a, a guy getting uh, Texans taking a high pick? That's God-given talent. That a lot. It wasn't developed because you look at the stats and look at what he did. He wasn't developed and he's not wowing people so far. Look at wide receivers. Those, those guys just knew how to burn. Weight room, sure, I guess that's development as it is for Georgia. But you're talking about development and you're talking about work ethic and hard work and defensive backs. There was a possibility that a bunch of these kids could play and could play early at Alabama because Alabama does not have the same type of depth that Georgia does. That That's unequivocally, I don't care. They have a talented roster. They don't have the depth that we do, and it's not even close. But all of a sudden, you're talking about a flip. It's a kid who wants to play and wants to play early, but also doesn't know the work ethic and saw the work ethic in Georgia. And I think there was a piece of that. Now, he's a talented kid. He's a hardworking kid. I don't doubt that. But he also is a kid that doesn't want to put in the type of Georgia hard work. The Georgia hard work and hard work are two different types. People, listen to me. Fans, listen to me. Georgia work ethic hits different than work ethic that you're used to. You know that company that you used to work to and you're like, oh man, that was hard days. And then you got to a, a, a really productive, really incredible company or really incredible team, really work ethic team. And all of a sudden people are like, oh no, this, this is, it's different. I thought I knew what hard days work was. This is different. Somebody asked me that if I wanted to be a farmer and I said, no, I'm too much of a sissy because that's different hard work. That's what Georgia has going for it in the program. And a couple of people that want to flip and go elsewhere, they don't know what's required of them or they do know and they don't want to do it. Maybe they can rest on talent. Maybe they can do their own thing. Maybe they think they're better than everybody else. Maybe. I don't know. But I'm here to tell you, George's work ethic slaps different, hits different than everybody else. Uh, we're going to come back after this. I'm going to talk about KJ Bolden as well as a couple of different names that you need to be looking out for because, ooh, I I'm telling you, it hits different than what you're what you're accustomed to. It hits different uh, than what you might be thinking to yourself. We still have a chance to go ahead and make a big, big, big splash in the recruiting news. Uh, but first, these. Right now, I'll let you know about Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is fantastic, fantastic, fantastic stuff. I love their shorts. I'm wearing some right now, as a matter of fact. I'm not going to stand up. I'm not going to show you because that's too embarrassing. But Bird Dogs is the place that you're going to go to get the best type of shorts with liners, the best joggers, the best shirts. They look fantastic. They got stretch khaki shorts designed to fit, fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. It makes you look better without you doing anything. You don't got to jog that mile tonight. Put on a bird dog. They fit way better than regular shorts and made of stiff or they are uh, that are made of stiff restricting cotton. These bird dogs are not. They are fixed the issue by inventing clo uh, cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you can get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice the movement. Show yourself wearing bird dogs all over town, all over the places you go and be recognized because people are going to look and be like, oh, hey, that it's a fantastic decision to wear a fantastic pair of shorts. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. Enter promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college. Promo code locked on for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take the bird dogs off. I guarantee you because I don't want to take mine off. Birddogs.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we're back talking recruits. Now we're going to talk about KJ Bolden, the recruiting news that he goes to Florida State, the NIL, that bag that was dropped in front of his doorstep and said, here you go, take this. Now here's why this is interesting. Here's why this is unique. And here's why I don't understand a single thing that these kids decide. You're a wide receiver. You want to go to Alabama. You have my respect. You, you, you're wide receiver. You want to come to Georgia. You have mad respect because you're looking at Jorge, Jorge Pickens, George Pickens. You're looking at Darnell Washington. You're looking at other guys. You want to go to Ohio State? Okay, I understand. You're a you're a a running back, uh, and you don't want to come to Georgia. I don't understand you, but you want to go uh, maybe to uh, Oklahoma or, or or maybe your quarterback. I want to go to to, to Clemson or Florida State. I, okay, okay. These systems, these these types of understandings of what's going on, in these programs. I get. I understand. 
I don't understand kids like KJ Bull. And this is not a slide on KJ. I hope he does well. KJ, go get you some. I truly mean that. No hard feelings. I wish you were at Georgia, but I understand what you did. I don't agree with it. Because what you did is you took money now instead of money later. Money now is not always as good as money later because money later hits different. Money later has a lot of interest. You go look at anybody that understands how money works and money, the, 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 the thing that is staved off, the thing that is curated, the thing that is to come is a thousand times better, a thousand times better than instant gratification now. Now, I get it. Maybe you have an incredible money manager. Maybe you can do some stuff right now. Maybe you're in a bad shape and maybe your family. I, I don't know your situation. I truly do not. And I am not pretending to understand your situation. But I do know this. If you look at all the players at Georgia, at these other, at, at other programs, not to be named, but specifically Georgia, that develop, that get people drafted high. Andrew Thomas gets his bag high pick. You see, you see Nick Chubb getting his bag developed and God given talent as well as being a freak and work ethic off the charts. You see guys littered around the league who are getting paid. Stetson Bennett was a walk on, wasn't going to get paid. He is laughing as he is taking millions to the bank. Here's why that's important. I don't know. I can't see the future, but I can tell you this past actions say a lot about future outcomes. Your past results say a lot about future outcomes and the future outcome right now for anybody that does not want to come to Georgia and get developed and get drafted. Lewis seen. Hello, Richard LeCount. I've been on this podcast before. I love Richard LeCount. He should not have been drafted where he was. That was Kirby smart and the guys putting him in positions and developing him to where he was. If you look at the league and you look at players that are developed at Georgia and then go on to lead productive careers and those who get paid, they are getting paid more than they would have taken going to another school and being the top rated recruit of all time at that school and getting NIL money. I don't understand it. We need, as a, as a college football fandom, we need to tell kids, go get educated. We need to have, just like at the NFL when they get drafted and they have a rookie camp and they have a financial advisor come in, we need a financial advisor for NIL because they need to understand, they need to tell these kids, they need to, if you're not taking that $2 million, that one whatever million you got from Florida State and you're not taking that and you're not putting it into some sort of incredible account that's making you money, if you're not investing that, if you're not, then I don't want to tell you because the development you're going to get it somewhere else is not going to be the same as you would at Georgia. At Georgia, you're putting all that investment into yourself and on the field and with the coaches, and they are going to turn you into something that can make millions of dollars. And it's not now, it's in three years. Sure, you got to wait three years. Ask Brock Bowers how that's going to go. Ask Andrew Thomas how that went. Ask Amarius Mims who came back to Georgia after testing the portal, seeing what's out there and going, no, thank you. Ask Stetson Bennett. Ask all of these players who know I will invest three years into a program and the program is going to invest in me. And then at the end of those three years, I will reap the rewards and it won't be now. And I'm fine. I will delay my gratification. Recruiting hits different, y'all. It needs to be. Uh, a couple other names that are on the radar for Georgia as we miss out on two recruits and have a couple flip is next name on the maybe the not the wavelength or maybe not the next to to sign uh, certainly somebody who we should keep an eye on um it is a kid that if you think when neary is not somebody who we might be able to get if you think when neary is is a is somebody that is totally off our radar if you don't think it's a chance, uh, Oklahoma and Missouri are after him, and he's a he's a top kid. He's he's got all these uh, uh, offers in the entire world. I, I don't know what to help you because he is an abject nightmare on the defensive end. He is somebody that's going to be a problem. He is going to be absolutely a wrecking ball, and Georgia is right in the mix for that. We have open spots now. Clearly, we got a couple of flips, a couple of decommits. Winiri is the next guy in the domino. And he is somebody that if you look at this recruiting class, very, very important because of how everything else fits. We got a couple of defensive line, a couple of three techs, a, a, a solid nose, a solid one or zero tech right there. I think when coming to Georgia, 
My gut tells me he's coming. It might be OU. I don't think it's Missouri. It would be the most shocking thing if it was Missouri. It's going to be OU or us. And if he goes OU, it's because it's closer to home. That's why he wants it. George is a little bit of a distance, and he is, by all accounts, a character guy who loves his family. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think he's coming to Georgia. I'd be willing to put some money on it. And I think now, especially with this news, I think he's been a primary target for Kirby and the rest of the staff, and he will continue to be leading up to what will be an exciting, exciting conclusion to this recruiting cycle. We're going to come back after this. I'm going to talk about how Florida still sucks and how they cannot tell me anything different. I don't care what they have at the recruiting class or where they have anything else. Uh, But first, these. And these are FanDuel. We're back, FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book of Locked On Bulldogs. We love them. They're the official sports book of Locked On Podcasts everywhere. And right now, you need to go to FanDuel.com because the football season is about to kick off. And FanDuel is giving you every chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on Super Bowl winner, you get a bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. That's right. You put a bet on somebody to win the Super Bowl, you're going to go ahead and you're going to get a bonus bet every time that team you chose to win the Super Bowl, Ravens. Todd Munkin is going to do magic with Lamar Jackson. Mark my words. MVP, sure. Super Bowl, yep. Mark it for me. Every time the Ravens win, in my case, who I'm betting on, uh, they're going to give you bonus bets. Just pick any team in the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets every victory. You can use their bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Take every single fan experience of betting and get over to FanDuel. They're the official sports book. And go over and get, get the over on Georgia's win total. Get the over. We're going to hit the over. Do it right now. That's fanduel.com slash locked on terms and conditions apply. All right, Florida still sucks, and here's why Florida still sucks. They are not the team that you thought they were. They are Well, they are the team who we, Georgia fans, think they are and know them to be, but they are not the team that they are proposing themselves to be, and here's why they're not the team they're proposing themselves to be. They're all up in everybody's fields talking about how they are ranked so, so high in the recruiting class. They're number three. Watch out, Georgia. You don't know what's coming for you. Let me tell you why I know what's coming for me, and it's disappointment for you, Florida fan. You can go ahead and tell me you got this edge kid, Waller. You can get go ahead and Xavier cornerback or DJ Lagway, who your quarterback is, and you think, oh, man, we have all the incredible things. Talk to me after the season, off the cycle goes, and how these players rate then. Please. Because here's what I know about Florida coaching and what they look for. They don't know how to assess talent. They know how to assess bright lights. Some of these kids are bright lights. I no, no hate on these kids. Some of them bright lights. Some of them got size and speed combos and tape to go. But a lot of them are not the type of kids that have something beneath that. That's something once the lights go out, they keep working and they have some sort of fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth gear. They don't have that because Florida they don't know what to do with it. Florida still sucks because you can tell me all in the world you're coming. Billy Napier is going to go ahead and, and some belt Billy is going to have this recruiting class. His guys, I've heard that forever. I've heard, I've heard Mullen say that forever. I've heard Florida say that forever. It's not going to happen because you don't have a talented team this year. And when the team starts losing and these kids see that, and these kids that don't have that sixth, seventh gear come in and you can't develop them and, and they're, they have something lacking at the end of the cycle, not the beginning of the cycle, but the end of the cycle, this is Florida after all. And they have a couple of kids that are here from, from spots of the state and parts of the country that are just incredible. It won't be the same come the end of the season. You're going to lose out to Florida State. You're going to lose out to Miami. Some of the big targets that you really wanted. Some of these kids are good, but they're not the kids that you actually wanted, Florida. You settled for them. And they went to Miami. They went to Florida State. They went elsewhere. And by the end of the cycle, they're not going to be looking so good. I'm telling you, I'm here to let you know. Florida, you still suck. And thank you for trying, though. I appreciate that. Hey, this has been Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We will see you all next time.